Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. What's up, everybody, and greetings from Sin City. So yesterday morning, Carrie and I get up super early, and we go and start doing our daily chores. You know, we go to the store, maybe stop by the casino for a couple of minutes, you know, the usual things that you do when you both have a day off. Well, it happened to be Valentine's Day yesterday as well, right? So Carrie and I go to the store, and there's a store called Smith's that's not too far from our house. And mind you, it's about, oh, I don't know, 7 o'clock in the morning. So usually the self-serve station at Smith's is easy. You go in, check yourself out, you're in and out in 10 minutes. Not the case yesterday. We all know that one of America's beloved pastimes is procrastination, and we saw that yesterday in effect. There was a line from the self-serve station at uh, Albertson's, the checkout, all the way back through the frozen food aisle, and I'm not kidding here, this is not hyperbole or BS, all the way through the frozen food aisle, all the way back to the meat. So Carrie and I get on this line, And we're standing there in this line, and we start uh, chopping it up with this dude in front of us, this dude from Atlanta. And, you know, we're just BSing about, you know, just stuff in general, you know, how uh, everybody waits till the last minute always to to go shopping and to do things like this. And uh, I said to him, I was like, look, man, I know what you're up to. I know last night you were plying your lady with a few extra drinks so that you had some extra time this morning to get up and participate in the great American pastime of procrastination. My dude was dying in front of us. We were cracking up, me and this dude from Atlanta, for about 10 minutes as we sat in this line just making the best of it. And we couldn't be... We couldn't be... Any more different me and this dude, right? Guy from Atlanta, me, dude from Vegas. But the moral of the story and what I'm getting at here is these people on the TV would have you think that everybody hates each other if you're different from somebody else. When in reality, on the ground, none of that is the truth. So I just, it, it makes me laugh. Every time I hop on a a social media platform like Twitter or Facebook and I see all of this vitriol and then I, 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 you know, I even fall into the trap of thinking, man, this is, is this how everyone is, is acting towards each other? But that's not the case. You know, in the real world, like I always say, go out and talk to your neighbors, go out and speak to people in the grocery store and you'll see that we have way more in common than we have different. So... I just I just found it funny yesterday that so many people from so many different walks of life life I mean you had people from literally every walk of life every ethnicity you could imagine was in that line yesterday and everybody had the same goal make sure that your dude or your chick wakes up to some flowers and some cards because at the end of the day everybody remember we have a whole hell of a lot more in common with each other then we have disagreements. So let's try and remember that, huh? Try and kill some of the vitriol and some of the BS. All right, enough of my sermon. And enough of the unity message for the morning, huh? You guys want to jump into the episode? That's why you're all here after all, right? To talk a little Jeffrey Epstein? See that segue that I just did right there? That's what we call a segue, folks. So last night during the live stream... We were talking about a lot of things, Jeffrey Epstein. And one of the things that came up during the live stream was the fact that the estate had lost the deed to the Palm Beach mansion. Now, this story first broke back in December. And once again, one of the show's favorite reporters, Chris Spargo, was all over it. So... Chris broke this story and was talking about this, and nobody else was, like usual. And we touched on it briefly here on the podcast, obviously. And even back then, I thought that 
even though there was a bit of a hubbub here about the deed, that eventually it'll all it would all get working out worked out, right? Because A, they want the tax money. B, Glazer is a pretty powerful developer. And at the end of the day, this this church, I don't think that they have the guns to litigate against people like the estate, obviously, with all of their uh unlimited fortunes that they steal from the survivors. And then you add somebody like Glazer with his money and his uh, power and pull. And, you know, there's no chance that the deed is not going to end up in the hands of the estate, in my opinion. But it is interesting that the estate is so ridiculously bad at their job that they almost got an end around pulled on them by some charity church. And last night on the live stream, shout out to Pop, always with a little bit of uh, fantastic sarcasm, was asking if it was possible, I mean, if it was possible at all, that we just had Darren Indyke, but you know, backwards, we had him confused with somebody who was really a bad guy, and it was uh, a pretty funny moment of sarcasm from Pop, the way he uh, delivered that message, so shout out to listener Pop, who's always joining us on those Sunday live streams. All right, let's jump into this article from OK Magazine, authored by Chris Spargo, from December 23rd of 2020, and let's see what's going on with the deed down in Palm Beach. Headline, Jeffrey Epstein's estate lost the deed to his $22 million Palm Beach mansion. Yeah, no big deal, you know, like me or you, we go buy uh, an item at, you know, Best Buy or whatever, we lose our receipt, we go absolutely batshit, I know I do, I go crazy if I can't find my receipt. You know, what if I gotta return the damn thing? I'm not rich, I can't eat a $700, $800 uh, product that I don't want. So I keep that receipt stashed. Imagine having a deed to your house, $22 million pad, and you don't know where the deed is. You don't have that in your lockbox with your Saudi Arabian passport, Epstein. What a moron. The Palm Beach mansion where Jeffrey Epstein abused dozens of underage girls first came on the market in July with a $21.995 million asking price. The home's history, combined with its location in a COVID-19 hot zone, did not make it an easy sell. But just four months later, the Wall Street Journal published a new exclusive which claimed that Florida real estate developer Todd Michael Glazer was in contract to purchase and then raise the pedophile's waterfront pad. There was just one problem. Epstein's estate no longer had the deed to the home. So that's where the... uh, The confusion begins, right? And the discussion starts. Well, if they don't have the deed to the home and this charity had the deed to the home, how the hell did that happen? How did the deed get into the hands of this charity? That's the real question. And obviously, does the charity have a legit claim? We know a lot of people are coming out of the woodwork trying to get some clout and make a few bucks off of the Jeffrey Epstein case. We see them on Twitter. We see them on Facebook. We see them all over the place. So I, it's not shocking to see this charity, I'm doing finger quotes here, air quotes here, folks, uh, try and get in on it, right? Try and pick a few pieces uh, of flesh from the corpse. Now, even though the estate is ridiculous and obviously terrible at their job, at the end of the day, I believe that this won't come back to haunt them, right? I believe that Glazer will get the, this sale will go through. Um, a judge will rule in favor of the Epstein estate. And in fact, I believe that we have, I, I, we have covered, um, uh, an article where they talk just about that. In fact, so I'll, I'll, I'll take a look back and, 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 uh, you know, as Jen Saki says, I'll circle back to you with that. The estate could not sell the property or raise the structure because Epstein had purportedly signed a deed transferring ownership of his $22 million Palm Beach mansion to Love and Bliss just four months before his 2019 arrest. Huh? Now, why would Jeffrey Epstein sign over the ownership of his $22 million Palm Beach mansion to Love and Bliss? Why in the world would that occur? 
We know that Epstein isn't giving anything out for free. Epstein's the kind of rich guy where you knock on his door for Halloween and you still get the shitty candy, right? Figure a guy like that's giving out the actual candy bars. You show up and you get yourself some candy corn. That's the kind of guy Jeffrey Epstein is. So signing over his lease, sign, nah, that, whoop, hold on, pump the brakes. There is always a move after a move wrapped in another move when we're talking about Epstein the scumbag. A notarized deed bearing Epstein's signature and dated March 2019 had been filed in Palm Beach County a week before the news of the pending sale. That dude, that dude, that deed soon became an official record and, as a result, Epstein's estate did not have the power to transfer the property or demolish the haunted house where the likes of Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell abused children. So that is what the holdup has been, obviously. And we touched on that earlier, that there was a bit of a holdup because of this sort, this, this impediment, this roadblock. And at the end of the day, obviously, this, this property is going to be sold. The money is going to go into the fund. But there always has to be hoopla. There always has to be, as they would say back in the day, some rigmarole. And we're seeing, we see that right here. Everybody wants a piece, right? Somebody like Epstein dies. If anybody has a pinky's, a pinky finger nails worth of a claim, they're going to try and sink their teeth in. And this situation with the deed is certainly no different. This situation with love and bliss. And so Laurel Incorporated and lawyer Adam Seligman were forced to file a list pendis earlier this month in hopes that the court would support their request to obtain a quiet title from Love and Bliss. And that did not occur, okay? They did not get that title. Um, the title was, obviously, uh, ended up being in the hands of the estate, and this sale with Glazer is gonna go through and is being finalized, as far as we know. Now, the reason we're going over this again is because it was brought up last night on the live stream, and as you all know, I love to add context when we can. So, with this morning being a relatively slow news day, I figured this would be the perfect time for us to do just that. A little more meat on the bone. The October deed gave ownership of 358 El Brio Way to the Christian organization despite its very brief history and unclear aim. I mean, what? Imagine being part of a church that has ties to Jeffrey Epstein. I mean, short of it being a church run by Aleister Crowley, I don't know how any church could be involved with this guy and, and and this whole situation with the deed and how it was signed over to them that that deserves further exploration the legacy media needs to dig deeper here and use some of their vast resources you know independent content creators like myself we only have so much financial means to, you know, dig into these cases, right? Most of us have other jobs, have other things that are going on, bills, all of that jazz. But the legacy media, they're making tons and tons of money. But they can't dig a bit deeper here? Love and Bliss was founded in 2018 by 22-year-old Alexander Leschinzinski. The company, which brings in just under $31,000 annually, also counts Zachary Lachinsky and Jason Garzon as directors. So this company brings in less than $31,000 a year. Okay? But yet, they say that they have a claim to a $22 million deed. If that doesn't set off alarm bells with the, the IRS, I don't know what will. Talk about begging to be audited. How in the world can you say that as a, uh, an organization that brings in $31,000 that you're entitled to this $22 million mansion? Now, of course, people will say, well, Epstein signed the will over, and I agree with that. Why? That should be the question. Not the fact that, he had, that this actually occurred, but deeper. Why did this occur? What were they trying to accomplish? What was Epstein's 
goal because we know that everything was 10 steps ahead, right? These people were, they're very shrewd, very shrewd. The initial address for the company had been the home where Alex and Zachary live with their mother in Reddington Beach, Florida. But on the deed, it was changed to Epstein's Palm Beach Mansion. Again, the weirder just keeps getting weird. Zachary Leschinsky and Jason Garzon. Two dudes living home at mom's house with a $31,000 company saying that they're entitled to Jeffrey Epstein's $22 million palace. Well, if that's the case, I got a deed over here to Zorro Ranch. That makes me the owner. I want to go to my house. I mean, talk about another case of the absurd. Those Palm Beach party days look to be over, however, for Alex and Zachary. A judge did rule in favor of Epstein's estate, and executor Darren Indyke, who prior to that point had not been the title owners for six weeks. So again, this is what I'm talking about when I said I thought I remembered hearing that the estate definitely got the deed back. But how in the world did this even occur in the first place? That's what I'm interested in. Not the fact that it did occur. I want to get to the genesis. Why did it Why did it occur? How did these people become players in this? And what did love and bliss have to do with Jeffrey Epstein? The estate did not waste any time moving forward either once they received the good news. OK can report that over the weekend... Indyke submitted a proposal to raise the building, cabana, and pool, which was approved by the Palm Beach Architectural Committee. Now, we talked about that as well, and when that happened, we were uh, discussing that news. And again, like I said, a guy like Michael Glazer, a big-time developer in a place like Palm Beach on Billionaire's Row, eventually is going to get their way no matter what. Certainly, if he's battling against two dudes living in their mom's basement with a $31,000 company. OK did discover a number of potential problems with the deed when first reporting on its existence back in November. A call to the phone number listed for Love and Bliss's lawyer, John Mayer, not the musician, resulted in an angry man yelling that he was not the person on the deed. Well, that's always nice, huh? Some angry, wild maniac yelling at you over the phone after you call trying to do your job. Always pleasant. Mayor, not the musician, who according to the deed was based in Jacksonville, had a New York State area code. His office suite was also not recognized by the U.S. Postal Service, and the actual address turned up an office building with just two residents. Young Realty College Tax and Retirement Strategies. Those companies are both managed by the same man. You know what this screams out to me, folks? Scam. Plot. A way in. Try and get some money on the backs of the survivors. Absolutely absurd. This love and bliss company needs a deeper look. And it just so happens that I might have the time to do just that. Calls were then made to the witnesses by OK. Though, only one answered her phone. Judy Tut, not King Tut, claimed to have no knowledge of the deal and said she would not have signed a deed in Palm Beach County. She then said that a family member had passed away just hours before and she could not talk any further at the time. Well, that's horrible. Sorry to hear that. I mean, never good when a uh, family member passes away. But you're never going to get anything out of these people anyway. Dead family member or not, even if it's the best of times. You, you get one of these people after they hit mega bucks, and they're still not going to tell you the, the truth. OK was able to confirm that Liana L. Johnson, the woman who notarized the document, is in fact a registered notary public. A call to her listed workplace revealed, though, that she had not been employed there for some time. Attempts to reach her directly were unsuccessful with two numbers having been disconnected and a third not allowing voice messages. That's nice. That's nice, huh? Again, these people are all operating in the shadows. None of these people are real. None of these entities are real. This is all about money laundering. I mean, the writing is on the wall. It's so apparent. I don't know how other people can't spot this. I mean, it might as well be surrounded in glowing lights that are blinking on the Las Vegas Strip. Look here, we have a money laundering operation. 
Multiple emails to Kerry Warwick, the Corcoran agent who has been tasked with selling Epstein's home, were not returned, and a request that she call OK made through the real estate firm's website was also unsuccessful. All right, folks, so there you have it. There's the story of the lost and then found Jeffrey Epstein Palm Beach Mansion deed. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links that go with this episode can be found in the description box. And remember, everybody, I am going camping for the next two days. So there will be a couple of flashback episodes and obviously one new episode Tuesday and Wednesday. So look for just the the, the one new episode on each of those days and then the flashback episodes. And like I said on the live stream last night, if I can get to a spot with some Wi-Fi or with, where I can get some data usage, maybe I'll do another live stream from the park or at the very least, we'll do a, another episode right from the campsite, hopefully. So I hope you all have a fantastic day and I will be back later on and we will pick up where we left off.